Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm certainly pleased and blessed to be with all of you. Oh, don't turn down the lights. I'll, nobody will, I can't even see the screen, so you're going to have to let me know uh, if everything's working OK. Um, it's really an honor to be here to provide the, uh, the annual report. I have to be honest, this is an abridged version of what we provide on a quarterly basis to the executive committee, the finance committee, thank you, and, uh, and the vestry. <clears throat> Full disclosure, as I prepared for uh, this 255th Treasury's report uh, for this presentation, I think some of you may find uh, that there's going to be too much detail. Some, is go some are going to say there's not enough detail. Uh, but all of you are going to say that the information is too small on this screen. And so for that reason, I either invite you up closer. We've also had uh, a number of hard copies that are provided in the back. We're going to be posting this online on our website, and I'm happy to review this with anybody over the next days, weeks after the meeting. So you're going to have to let me know if this goes forward. Are we on to the next one on the treasurer's topics? No, Jill is saying no. Let me just, OK. So uh, let's four things I'd like to focus on. When I think about finance ministry, I think about communicating the way in which we look at our finances in, in, in sort of four areas. The first is uh, I'd like to share a perspective on our financial strength by looking at the foundation on how we operate through our balance sheet. It also includes a healthy endowment. The second is St. Mark's financial health which includes operating statement results for 2018, as well as our vestry approved budget for 2019. I'm also gonna take a look briefly at our 2017, you may recall this from last year, 2017 surplus investment uh, that we used for important one-time discretionary expenses in 2018. And I'm also gonna highlight another success story from our preschool operations. Uh, financial capital, I'm going to give you a brief overview. Father Peter was kind enough to do most of that for me on Empower the Parish, so I'll just touch on some of those uh, briefly. And finally, I want to touch on our financial resources of experience and oversight, and I'll close with our financial management initiatives looking forward. So the next slide. Uh, getting started looking at St. Mark's financial strength as measured by our balance sheet. At year end, we had nearly $16 million in total assets. I have to say that St. Mark's remains in the enviable position of having a very strong balance sheet with a solid capital base, a healthy endowment, a conservative balance of cash reserves, and no long-term debt. This places us among the top of the Episcopal churches in Connecticut in terms of our financial strength. The balance sheet has three primary pillars. The blue segment on the circle represents our endowments and trusts, which total $6 million. And on an annual basis, the endowments provide a source of income in the form of a 4% draw. Our property, buildings, and equipment remain steady. They represent the land, church buildings, the rectory, our cemetery. That totals $5.7 million, or 36% of the total, and that's in green. And finally, the yellow segments of that circle and the bars, that represents cash and man marketable securities that we hold for operating expenditures and capital investments. We're also in the second year of tracking our accounts receivables from pledge commitments made at the end of each year on behalf of our annual stewardship, and you're going to be hearing more about that in just a minute. And as I look over the last two years, the balance sheet has actually increased uh, by 12%, rising by 18% in 2017, declining by 5% in 2018. And this is, again, as a result of accounting for receivables, contributions to our endowment, and investment performance returns. Let's take a look at those investment returns. This is probably the, the one slide that you're not going to be able to see anything, but let me give you just a quick sense of it. Following the strong market returns in 2016, when the endowment earned 6.7 percent, and in 2017, when it rose 16 ,5%. 2018, I think we have all felt this ourselves in our own uh, retirement funds, proved to be certainly much more volatile market, particularly in the fourth quarter, resulting in a decline in performance of negative 6.5 percent. When you look over the last five years, three years, excuse me, 
The endowment has produced over 5% in total return. And these accounts, our endowment accounts, are managed alongside the endowments of the Episcopal uh, Church Diocese, as well as uh, 200, uh, excuse me, 120 Connecticut-based churches. And this has managed a portfolio consisting of 20 active ma managers and index funds over a allocation of assets, including equity, fixed income, tangible assets, and cash. And these are um, overseen by uh, U.S. Trust, as well as uh, Saint, Mar as well as a committee that includes Tom Berardino representing us uh, at the diocese, as well as Saint Mark's Endowment Committee. Moving ahead, taking a look at the financial strength as re resulted as reflected by the balance sheet, we're going to take a look at our financial health through the lens of our operating income results. In 2018, St. Mark's earned nearly $2.3 million in operating income, which exceeded our budget by 7% and our prior year by 2%. Again, there's five primary sources of our income. The first, pledge payments, non-pledge gifts, and contributions from Sunday Plate represents more than two-thirds or 69% of our income. The donations in red, include income coming from financial support of our mu music ministry, weddings, funerals, facility rentals, and special gifts to support our full complement of clergy. Our endowments, as I mentioned, represent an important part of our income, 10%, over $220,000 through the annual draw of our funds. And now while Mayfair proceeds can fluctuate due to weather conditions, it nonetheless remains an a meaningful component of our operating income and an important source of our outreach initiatives. And finally, a very small portion, but interest income uh, has provided about $19,000 in income through investments in short-term high-quality CDs. That's the income side. On the expense side, are, they're certainly more complex, uh, more components, Hard to see, I'm sure. Uh, let me just summarize it for you. Nine major categories reflected here. I have to say, this is nine out of 49 individual line items expenses. And indeed, they're less predictable than our operating income. More than half of our operating expenses represent compensation and benefits for clergy, directors, and staff, musicians, section leaders, even the hourly childcare services provided during Sunday services. Other expense categories each range between 3 and 8% of the total and include donations and outreach grants, our diocesan common mission support, telecom, IT, utilities, printing postage, our buildings and grounds, insurance, fees, advertising, flowers, supplies, Mayfair expenses, it goes on and on. Now, I have to say we started 2018 as, as Dean mentioned, with a balanced budget for both income and operating expenses at $2.1 million. However, at this time last year, at the annual meeting, we reported that through the grace of God, the generous, generosity of our parishioners, our good work and our good luck, uh, we, our 2017 operating income exceeded our operating expenses, generating a modest surplus of about $148,000. So go to the next page, Jill. So as we think about that, and you may rec recall this slide from our last year's meeting, and we shared two good news stories. One, that we were entering 2018 with a surplus of reserve to really provide for a cushion of future unforeseen income shortfalls, many deferred maintenance projects that had been pushed down uh, the road uh, because we just couldn't afford them and other unexpected expense items. And the second that was the two gifts that had been pledged totaling 300,000 to help reestablish the full complement of our clergy resources in 2018 and beyond. So let's take a look at a little bit deeper into that operating surplus. The next slide shows that we, we, just, we really used a portion of that surplus, approximately 126,000, to invest in one-time discretionary items in 2018, while still leaving us a reserve cushion of approximately $34,000. So next slide should show you really how are we, what areas did we focus on in thinking about how to strategically 
and with discernment, focus on how we wanted to use a portion of that surplus. And there's really two areas of focus that represented the strategic use of the surplus. And, and they really helped contribute to that momentum uh, that Dean spoke about in terms of what we're experiencing within our parish. 42% of our investments in 2018 with that surplus was in ministry initiatives. Those include Francis, our pastoral pup, funds used for our music director search and our Christmas mus musicians, and also for, finally, for enhancing our digital ministry with additional streaming cameras for our classrooms, a lot of the things that Father Peter had shared earlier. 58% of that surplus went to long deferred buildings and grounds repair and maintenance. Those include the cottage, the garage, an update of our choir room, clergy off offices, uh, we uh, repaired the fountain outside, put in new tables for Morrow Hall, we had outdoor painting, carpet cleaning, new doormats, tree work, and a beautiful gold leaf on the St. Mark sign and the great jo doors as you enter church. Honestly, had it not been for the surplus, none of these expenses would have been covered. So again, this was an investment and also provided a great source of our momentum. Looking ahead, I also wanted to just make a quick mention of preschool. Uh, you know, this is just a, something that comes from the youngest members of our St. Mark's community. It's a thriving school. It operates on the basis of the education process should address all areas of learning, including social, emotional, spiritual, physical, and of course, intellectual. 13 teachers serve 64 students in the ages of two to five. This is a fiscally sound operation. It's managed by its own preschool board. They generate over 400,000 in income, and it provides our parish with rental income and importantly, capital investments. You've seen some of them. You've seen the, the uh, Noah's Park in Morrill Hall, and also last year, they enhanced the ventilation of our air quality systems uh, through our, our classrooms. Okay, uh, looking ahead for 2019 in the budget, this is the Finance Committee and Vestry approved uh, budget. Uh, once again, we are managing our expenses to a balanced budget. Uh, we're creating a bottoms up basis uh, based on the work from uh, Jill Sekoulis, our Director of Operations, myself, and certainly the staff, reviewed and approved by uh, Finance Committee, Vestry, and the Executive Committee. The total budgeted income and budgeted expenses are $2.17 million, so we're going to we conservative again this year, looking ahead. Uh, as a result of our 2019 annual stewardship pledges, which we'll hear, I have really good confidence in our budget expectations as we did the same in last year. On the expense side, total budgeted expenses have been actually reduced by 9% from 2018 obviously largely driven by uh, the reduction in those one-time discretionary expenses that we made in 2018. So the biggest portion, as you can see there, is that comp and benefits. Um, that's the biggest portion of, of our expenses. They are projected to increase 6.6%, and that reflects the first full year of a full complement of our three clergy members. Our, uh, it also includes a vestry-approved cost of living, merit and market increases for our clergy and staff, and the appointment of our new choir master, Ned Tilton, who's going to join us in February. The diocesan common mission support is also budgeted to increase by 8%. You know, frankly, that's just a result of our growth as a parish by the number of families and their generosity through pledge income. All other budgeted expenses have been reduced from 2018 actual, and those are most notably buildings and grounds by 44%, utilities where we're benefiting from the full year of our solar panel usage. We've reduced our costs in printing, print advertising, administration costs. So that's really what looking forward in terms of our, of our financial health. Let me look to financial capital. Um, Father Peter covered much of this in his address. Uh, this is also financial capital, as we think of, is our Empower the Parish campaign. We've now come to completing our pledge phase, which officially ended in uh, year-end 2018. Over 200 donors generously pledged $5 million towards the campaign mission to invest in St. Mark's infrastructure and endowment to support and sustain the needs of our parish. 
Finalizing the collection phase and the gift designations this quarter, we'll be sending out a final report to be shared with the community shortly thereafter. So three and a half million dollars of that campaign have been in projects that have been funded and 1.4 million is remaining to be invested. Again, Father Peter addressed most of these, so on the next slide, I'll just quickly go through them. Um, the largest component was the purchase of our, uh, our rectory. A number of other capital projects uh, included repointing the church plaza, uh, church eaves repair. We also did uh, gutter uh, reconstruction around Morrill Hall uh, and the vicarage renovation. Other uses of proceeds include additions to the very generous additions to the endowment, also fundraising expenses. Sometimes people ask me a question there, how much did it cost to raise uh, five million dollars? And it's about eight and a half cents. And that relative to other fundraising, I have to tell you that it goes anywhere from five to, to 20 cents per dollar. Eight and a half cents was very reasonably um, uh, generated. Lastly, looking ahead, 1.43 uh, million. There's a number of projects and initiatives that Father Peter addressed, and so they're just listed there as uh, potential future projects. Okay, let me, uh, just looking ahead, uh, we will be finalizing the Empower the Parish uh, Capital Campaign Report. Uh, we also have three, uh, we're very excited about the three new uh, people that will be joining us. We'll have well, three uh, first full year of three full-time clergy. We'll have our new permanent music minister will serve. And Lauren Clancy, I'm most delighted about that. Lauren, I don't know where you are, but that she's joining us as uh, assistant treasurer, and I'm thrilled about that. We'll again conservatively manage our expenses to maintain the balance budget management. And looking forward, we're working also on introduction of asset capitalization and depreciation. It brings us to full gap uh, compliance when we introduce that into our financial statements. And we'll also be looking at uh, our endowment investment manager after a five-year anniversary. So I'd, let me just, I want to close with, as I did last year, acknowledging that financial management is indeed a team sport in each of the individuals and groups that participate in this process, oversee portions or the whole financial operations and statements. And I have to say with sincere gratitude and thanks, uh, we commend you for your service and your support. That wraps up those four elements of the finance ministry. I don't know whether we want to take time for questions or maybe just, nope, Father Peter's saying no, but I'm always available to, uh, for, to answer any questions you might have. Thanks again.